Can you guys see my presentation? Apologies, I can't do the presentation mode for some reason right now. Yeah, we, we can see the slides, so um, yeah. Thank you. All right, so thank you for, uh, for the chance to, uh, to present. Uh, so today I'll be talking about, are you using, uh, still using the tunnels uh, or tunnel states? And this is a presentation on the behalf of the decision analysis in R for technology and health or the DART work group. So the agenda for today, I'll talk a little bit about why, what are tunnels, why do we need them, and can we get rid of them? And just like to give a little background for people who may not be familiar with tunnels, um, is that uh, like first, what I, why tunnels? And the main reason why do we need tunnels is that uh, because when we use Markov models or uh, state dependent uh, or state um, uh, dependent transition models, these are uh, by by um, a definition memoryless, which which simply means that if you are in a health state. Um, you don't know where you came from. Uh, so your transition to the next states, your utilities, your cost, everything will be dependent on your current state rather than your history. So because we don't have history, uh, one way to, ac uh, to accommodate that is that we will develop more um, uh, states and we account for, uh, for the history that way. So, so this is a little bit problematic because in clinical uh, practice and when we model diseases, a lot of diseases are actually dependent on history. So the longer you stay in a disease uh, state uh, defines how much you are costing and how what's your utility look like, what your transitions look like. So a lot of things in clinical practice do depend uh, on the state uh, and how long you are staying in that state. So or in another term, the state residence, or like how, how, how long you are staying in that. So just as a uh, term of background, so this is one of the papers that we recently published. Uh, it is an introductory tutorial on cohort state transition models in R, uh, and this this particular tutorial talks about uh, the um, uh, the uh, the transitions where uh, state the state transitions and the model is not time dependent. And as a background, uh, starting from here, and then I'll, I'll talk about the tunnel states in the next uh, couple of slides. So as you can see here, you have a simple Markov model. Uh, as we, this is the well loved and used. Uh, stick sticker model that we use in our courses and our teachings. So here we have the uh, this state transition model. It consists of everybody starting in a healthy state. Some people go into the sick state and uh, and then uh, progressing to the sicker state. And there are there are people who are dying at uh, a certain rates. Now this is a time independent, which uh, which means that uh, even though we have the t uh, subscript here, but think about it as uh, your transition from one state to the next does not depend on time. And here, this, this time dependency is age dependence, uh, and this is not what I'm talking about here, but like we don't know if you are in the sixth state, for example, we don't know how long you have been there. We only know that you are currently in the sixth state and your transition, regardless how long you've stayed in the sixth state will depend on your current status rather than your history. So, and this is a, an R is really simple to, to model these kind of um, uh, transitions, even if you have age dependency. So you just create a loop and you say, you know, like my transition, you basically reproduce this kind of uh, matrix multiplication inside the R, which is quite easy. So you just say the transition and then uh, your, your uh, distribution of the population in time T plus one is equal to their distribution in the previous time multiplied by transition probability matrix. And this is like the easiest part of Markov models. And a lot of the coding actually goes to the preceding, like the setups uh, of how, how, how does the transition probability really looks like, okay? And now I'm gonna switch uh, to tunnel states. So here, uh, the tunnel states, uh, we have another uh, publication. This is more on advanced uh, state transition models um, in, uh, in R that's also uh, published in the same issue of medical decision-making. And here's a tunnel, like here, we have the our transition uh, from the sixth state uh, is actually uh, time dependent. Uh, so the longer you're staying in the sixth state, uh, the higher the probability of transition to the sicker uh, state. Okay. Uh, so because of that, because we don't have memory, uh, our only option is really to increase the state space. So instead of having a single sick uh, state as we did before, now we have multiple. Uh, six days. So it goes, first cycle goes the first six day, and then, or first year, if you will. Uh, and the next cycle goes in the second uh, six day, and third six day, and so forth until, uh, until you eventually get out uh, of the tunnel. Now, obviously, this is okay if you have a simple model with a few uh, state uh, residency dependents. 
but if you have a very complicated model with many, many uh, state transitions, this can be problematic because you have to keep, you have to develop these uh, tunnel states uh, programmatically, which can be quite complicated and time consuming. So here's what this looks like um, in, in uh, a kind of array uh, formula. So you have to have a, a transition from each state to the next state. So you have the, uh, the, the rows are the originating states, the columns are the destination state, and you have time. And these transitions change over time. So you have to keep track of how to update this array by kind of carefully uh, adjusting the indices of uh, which state is the next one and which was the previous one. That's not hard. We provide the code to do it, but it just, it's just uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming, if, especially if you have multiple uh, uh, time dependencies. If you have age dependency and plus uh, the the uh, uh, residence uh, in the uh, in the state dependency. And this is what the R codes kind of look like. A lot of setup. So you set up your tunnel states. I'm not going to go through the code uh, here. It's in the in the um, in the uh, description. Uh, of the paper and the manuscript, I think it's also available on GitHub, uh, so you can you can look uh, look at it there. But but you you have to set up the tunnel state, you have to combine them, and eventually the 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 or the code involving the Markov multiplication state is the same. So you are still multiplying um, uh, the uh, the uh, same previous Hall states by uh, the uh, the uh, transition probability matrix at that time step. So that part stays the same, but the setup. That's the part that you have to create an additional loop, and you uh, you keep track of where people are coming from, where they are going, what states they are originating for, and so forth. And and you can imagine that if you have multiple of those tunnels, it can get um, quite cumbersome. So the other issue with this, um, like in addition to the complexity, is the computational cost. So because you are uh, adding a new additional state, the matrix multiplication imposes an exponential increase in number of computations, which can be fine for smaller models. Uh, but if you have hundreds of states and uh, tens of tunnels, that can be, take quite a bit of time, even for a something as quick as a Markov model or a uh, state-dependent transition models. So, uh, so these are the two main problems of it, uh, of coding tunnel states. So one way, to overcome this, at least uh, for uh, specific applications, is an alternative way of uh, specifying the um, the transition probability matrix. Uh, sorry, the uh, the uh, trace matrix, which is the M in the equation I, I showed earlier, and this depends on a paper that uh, one of our colleagues uh, at Dart uh, published. It's called a multi-dimensional state array, and the idea of it is that instead of having uh, vectors representing the trace uh, about like the distribution of the population. So here, this is the the kind of the traditional method. Uh, so you have the um, uh, the proportion of the population residing in each one of the states. This is the kind of the classic uh, trace matrix, and the, uh, this in the ve vector format depends on the previous cycle multiplied by transition probability matrix. So instead of specifying it as a um, as a vector, which eventually when you uh, combine all the vectors for all the time cycles, you're going to get the matrix. We call the trace matrix. And instead of doing that, we actually add an additional dimension uh, to that uh, trace matrix. So instead of a vector, we make it into a matrix slice. And then when you combine them, it becomes an array, uh, a three-dimensional array. You can add additional dimensions based on other uh, time dependencies to it. But the basic simplest structure is this. And when you do that, and instead of multiplying the uh, the vector by the matrix, you, you multiply, you convert the vector into a diagonal matrix, and then you multiply by, uh, by the matrix. And what that does is that it preserves the history. So with that array, you, will, you can keep track of, uh, you get an additional, like an array out. From that array, you can keep track about the proportion of the population in each cycle, where they're coming from and where they're going to. So I'll repeat that. So this is, um, uh, in this particular formulation, you don't know where people came from and where they are going to because the matrix multiplication sums up uh, where people are coming from, all of them together, and then gives you a single number and that's cell. So the people here, these are the people who were coming from everywhere, ended up in state one, right? And the next one and so forth. So you don't, you lost the granularity about history, about where people are coming from. But by decomposing it, just thinking a simple, transformation from a vector to a diagonal matrix, you can preserve where people are coming from and where they are going to from one cycle to the next. And the idea here is that having this array matrix 
we, because now we have history, we can recover the state of residence. By, not, uh, by doing a little bit of uh, calculations, what you can get is you can keep track of where people are coming from and where have they been before. So for each trace, you can keep track of it back all the way to the beginning about the conditional uh, residence. And from that, you can obtain an equivalence for the trace matrix incorporating the tunnel states. All right, so here's the code. What it looks like it's pretty simple. Uh, so a simple function. You can, uh, what, what it takes in is the array matrix. That's the that's this array, um, like the transition uh, array that you, it gets developed by uh, multiplying the diagonal by um, uh, by the transition probability matrix. You get this array. So you pass in this array, and you also tell it which state you want. Let's give it the state name, and what it does. It computes couple, couple, uh, three uh, key, uh, uh, three key quantities. The one of them is the proportion in each cycle coming from other states. The proportion on the cycle coming from the same state and the previous, uh, like um, uh, from the previous cycle, and the state proportion coming from other states. So, by doing some calculations and some manipulations of those quantities, you can get the proportion residing in each state and how long they have been there. Um, so basically, the, what you get out of a uh, of a tunnel state, and then you can expand that and get equivalent structure with a tunnel state. And here, what we did is uh, we looked into a, a, a numerical example of sicker sicker model. We randomly generated examples of tunnels, uh, ranging from anywhere from a one cycle, uh, like a one tunnel, to a thousand tunnels. And thousand tunnels simply reflects like if you have a hundred cycles per uh, for hundred uh, for ten states. Uh, so, or, or you can uh, think about different formulations of it, but that's just an example to see how does it perform. And for all the um, uh, results, we actually, uh, the numerical uh, results were identical, which uh, gave us confidence that the code is structurally sound and works. Um, and then uh, for, uh, the, uh, for the computational time, uh, what we got actually, this is um, uh, like the number of cycles shown in the x axis. So this is like the number of tunnels, basically, and then in time in seconds. So this, again, it's a simple model, a very fast computer, so it doesn't take very long. Uh, but, but, but the basic structure is the same. So here's the linear growth of the dynamic array approach, because here we are not expanding uh, the state space. We are actually just doing a calculation on the top of the array. Uh, so, but if you can see, like, as uh, when the number of states actually reaches about like 200, uh, then um, the the two diverge from each other, and the tunnels become exponentially more computationally expensive, with many false difference. Now, one thing that we are still working on, one limitation right now of of uh, this approach is that uh, we can recover state residency, conditional state residency, very efficiently, um, and it's very reliable. Uh, uh, which works very well if you have costs or benefit that are depending on the state residency. But if you have the transition probability, uh, we, uh, we have not been able to expand uh, the tunnel state to when the transition probability they are, do actually change based on how long uh, people are staying in, uh, in a state. And this can also be important. For example, if you have the probability of um, a person uh, more uh, like getting additional myocardial infarctions, after having a history of myocardial infarctions, that will be an important consideration for using uh, for using tunnel. So that would require us to change the structure of the code. We believe that the code will work, but we need to change structure so that the dynamic array will also incorporate that change in probability, uh, uh, probably with adding additional dimensions to it. So in summary, uh, no need to expand the state space or creating tunnels if you, your only purpose is keeping track of the state residence of how long people are staying in a state. Um, and this is uh, in, uh, can, it's not achievable using the simple uh, matrix multiplication of a Markov model, but could be achieved easily with the dynamic uh, transition array approach. Uh, however, the purpose is really uh, to, change the trans uh, 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 to change the transition probability uh, as a function of this, uh, how long you have stayed in the uh, state, then you will st uh, still need to use tunnels. Uh, but we will be uh, working on that. So more on that to come. But uh, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. That's fantastic. That was uh, really extremely clear. And thank you for keeping to time again. So we've had uh, two questions in the chat. So Robert is asking, is there a reason for the spikes in time for the non-tunnel method on your graph? Oh. 
Uh, excellent question. So, so what happens here sometimes, uh, you know, we did not repeat the experiment many times. So this is just a, a, a uh, like aberration every once in a while, you get the computer, it's a, a computer skew for uh, sending the R command to the processes basically. So this is just a completely dependent on the, uh, on the, uh, like on the, uh, like, you know, my personal computer. If I would repeat this many, many times, this will, specs will disappear. That was just a, uh, like a aberration every once in a while happening. Right, and there's a question from Howard about how these methods uh, compare to Hawkins 2005, which was a um, paper on using or to incorporate time dependency of treatment response, if you're familiar with that one. Uh, I'm, uh, I think I've read uh, about it a while back, but I think the, the approach, yeah, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So the approach, I think, was using, uh, expanding the state space. Uh, so it was like uh, doing, uh, I can't remember quite the approaches. It was different, but I will, I will look it up. If, sure. Howard, if you remember, uh, like give a summary about what, what was done in that paper, that'll be great. But I think there was a difference between them in the way that they were structured. Uh, their approach was mostly for transition probabilities. Our approach is mostly for state residence for costs and benefits. I believe that was the difference between okay. the two. Um, great, thank you. And Howard has a follow-up question. And Howard, I wonder, is it worth you turning on your camera and just asking this because... Um, this is to do with uh, Devon's HESIM package, which Christopher presented on last week uh, for your semi semi Markov model, where you compared um, creating tunnel states manually in Excel and then using OR much more efficiently by hacking HESIM. Do you want to uh, mention that? Uh, talk about that, Howard. Yep. You've pretty much said everything I was going to okay. say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would it, be, would it be worth doing a comparison between your hacking of HESIM and um, what, what was just presented? Do you think maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Happy to. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with that uh, uh, method, but uh, yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of uh, additional things that could be done. Uh, and the, the 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 basic idea here is that um, if you use the the array, uh, like there's no reason for Markov models to be memoryless, right? Like if you use an array, you you actually preserve the memory. It's just you have to do some computations and calculations to recover that history from a structure that you already have. But everything uh, is here. Everything is actually represented in this array. Uh, so it's just like having kind of, you know, uh, dicing and slicing and um, and in a way that will recover uh, the history in a meaningful way. But absolutely, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. So if you can send me the, the approach, sorry, I missed the other presentation uh, last week. Uh, but if you send me the, the uh, information, I'll be happy to uh, look into it. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll, I'll leave that to you, Howard, to send across. Maybe there'll be potentially a nice paper comparing different ways of avoiding tunnel states in Excel and, for efficiency properties. So that would be a nice outcome of this session. Um, any, uh, any other questions or should we um, thank all the speakers in this session? Um, and I think that it's, uh, so sincere thanks to the speakers for keeping to time because you're the last uh, speakers in the whole session. So um, I think it just uh, remains for Pedro to wrap up, is that right?